For those of you who don't know, we are the proud new owners of a Atlas Class F intercontinental ballistic missile silo in the middle of nowhere, Kansas. We're going to be sharing with you all about that today, how we took it down, even though we were going up against some juggernaut companies that were out of California with private jet money. But the teaser video, if you'd like to see that first, is right there. Some great intro footage for you. We're going to get right into the show today. Welcome back to another episode of Affirm the Kuna. Today, our all-star guest is the hillbilly millionaire, Hugh Carter. Thank you. Thank you. Also joining us is the all-star real estate agent, Dan Durkell. Thank you. Thanks, Thank for, you. Uh, Thanks for having being us. being on set with a firm between us. We're really excited to have you. For everyone who doesn't know, we are going to discuss a really cool topic that we just took down, and that is missile silos. How do you guys feel about that? We got one! <laughs> Pumped. So, something really cool happened because of the system that these two gentlemen have in place. Within a very short amount of time, a missile silo came available, and it was bought and sold, or bought and held by Hugh Carnahan here to my left. Hugh, tell me about that situation. How did that play out? And how does it feel being the proud owner of one of the few Atlas F-type ballistic missile silos in America? Awesome! <laughs> Any other question? No. <laughs> no, it's really cool. Basically, we weren't looking for missile silos at all. That was not a thing that was not in the plans. I actually had Dan looking for caves, like a normal cave, like with bats, like a bat cave. We're looking for caves specifically for commercial purposes, and uh, that's how we started this whole thing. Now tell me about that, Dan. You have a client. He asked you for caves. Is that a normal request? If my client's looking for caves, I'm going to help him find a cave. That's all there is to it. So when you were looking for caves, what was popping up? Hundreds, if not thousands, of man caves. Oh, yes. man caves. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't exactly what he was looking for. No, I had to sift through quite a few of them, which I continue to do to this very day. And then something no caves else yet. better popped up, it sounds like. Yeah, always keeping an eye out for unique opportunities, and that is when the silo presented itself to us. Do you guys refer to it as the silo? Pretty ominous, if you ask me. Pretty exciting. So you said, what happened? The silo came onto your radar. What did you do next? So it came onto my radar, found it through my network, and um, I immediately thought to myself, this is something Hugh would be very interested in. So shot a text message over to him. I said, hey, man, got to check this out. Let me know your thoughts and send it over. Why Hugh? What, what made you think of specifically because he is the hillbilly millionaire and that is what hillbilly millionaires do they buy missile silos <laughs> darn <laughs> right they do mm -hmm. that makes perfect sense Hugh describe to me a little bit about the system in place it sounds like you run a successful business you're kind of all over the map with some of the things that you're doing and yet the the team that you put into place brings the right things to you explain to me what that looks like so when Dan sent me that over, he was kind of joking. He's like, ah, check this out. It's on a cave, but what do you think? And I was kind of like, yeah, I'm on board. Let's go see it. And he's like, ah, I have a full day tomorrow. And I was like, no, 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 no. We're dropping everything. You should clear your schedule for tomorrow. I think he had two closings the next day or something. Something like that. Definitely appointments were made that needed. It was like really yeah. important stuff. And yeah. I was like, we're going. Uh, so even though I have a successful business, we have multiple moving parts. I harness the power of something called two-second lean, and that allows me to basically pop out. Everything completely continues to run as normal, and it allows us to be extremely nimble and agile. So we had zero plans. This popped up in the afternoon. We talked about it till like 11 p.m. at night, and we made plans that at 05, I was picking him up from his house, and we're going to drive for six hours to the middle of nowhere, Kansas. So that's exactly what we did. So you pick up. The Turkinator. <laughs> you guys get in a truck and you head straight to Kansas. What happened when you showed up? Well, actually, even before then, I grabbed myself, the second in command, kind of briefed them on what was going on, and then we just start driving the next morning. We pick up uh, Dan, probably five, you know, 15 at that time. Yeah. We had no contracts prepared, nothing. We just knew we were interested. Sun wasn't up yet. We just hit the road. We had our destination and we knew that we were going to do whatever it took to make it happen. So on the way there, I'm um, sitting in the back of your pickup truck and set up my hotspot on my phone 
And that's when I ended up putting together the contract to purchase this missile silo. So on I'm just the road, writing paper. typing it up in the back of the truck, just making things happen. Yeah, so <laughs> we're in the middle of nowhere. No contracts, this is not a normal real estate purchase. And we're buying it off market, not through the MLS. Mm -hmm. So we're just dri driving, uh, hotspots coming in and out on a laptop, just going. Now I'm assuming this thing generated mass interest. How in the world were you guys able to compete against what, several hundred other people who probably had the same idea as you it, did? It had definitely gone viral, like mm -hmm. actually gone viral. And at the time there were several, at least tens of thousands, I think mm -hmm. above 60,000 mm -hmm. people that were talking about it. It was very active at the time. And I know there was a lot of interest. Dan knows more about that because it, it was before we actually mm -hmm. got there that that happened. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And so mm -hmm. you had gotten there, had people already seen it? A couple of folks have, they flew in on their fancy private jets to see this place before we were able to get in there. So I was still hopeful at that point that we were gonna make it happen even though some other folks did see it. But, but how come they yeah. couldn't tie it up? So we actually asked the owner that. The seller's feedback was, while we had two different people fly in private jets, one of them was, they said they gotta go home and think about it. The other one said, we're really interested. We're very interested. I gotta fly back, present this to my board, in two days, we're gonna get you a, an, an offer together. So and that's- So it took for them to fly back on their corporate jet. We showed up the next day mm -hmm. after that, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's where our story begins. So we're, mm -hmm. we're behind the curve at this point. So their system created a window for you to go in and execute where other people could. We said we were going to get there at a certain time, and we got there at that time. And that right off the bat just established the fact that we keep our word and that you know, we're, we're men of integrity, so. Getting out there, and the other thing is we just out hustled. So yeah. that if we weren't taking an action, we were communicating why that action wasn't being taken yet. So the seller knew we were serious, we were interested, we were going. And we basically snatched this thing right off. Of, I think there were at least tens of offers in on this thing, full price, all cash. And we were able to snap it up prior to any of them being able to turn around and get back. Which is something that you do on a lot of your deals and properties. That's correct. And we're actually going to take to it a great example of the same situation. We end up locking up a sixplex for $199,000, which is $150,000 below what it should have been in our market. So, Hugh, tell me a little bit about having the right team in place. So we had the core four in place, and we got that directly from David Green's, two of David Green's books. One is Burr, and the second one is long distance real estate investing. Dan here is a part of my core four. The core four consists of your agent to find you and source your deals, your contractor to renovate the deals after they're done, your property manager to manage them when they're renovated and rented, and then your lender to refi the stuff back out. So Dan is the front line of bringing good deals to us. And when that happened, we were able to drop everything and begin executing and we just executed better than anyone else. It wasn't, we, they had more money, more people. They were probably more educated than we were, smarter, but we out hustled them. We took action faster than they did. And that's why we were able to lock this thing up. And now we're reaping the rewards. Mm -hmm. So pretty remarkable. Hillbilly from Missouri snatches up missile silo out of the very hands of the corporate tyrants that uh, always tend to get the best deals, right? Mm -hmm. So a story that obviously is, is pretty unique. There's gonna be more follow-up. There's going to be some exciting news. What you're doing with the silo, is that something that you can share with us, Mr. Carnahan? Why, Dane, it's funny you should ask. But the only way that you can get security clearance is if you subscribe to the Hillbilly Millionaire channel that you're watching this on currently. And follow us along as we bring you through the journey. Right now we're gonna take you to an example of where we executed the strategy just before this. It was right in our backyard and it was an incredible deal. We ended up getting some insane ROI for the investor who bought this. We'll go check it out. The finger guns. We are now standing in the property that we were talking about earlier. This was the proving ground for us to hone our strategy. This is a sixplex that we were able to buy for 199, 
It was absolutely unreasonable. It should have been $350,000 in our market, but we were able to get it before everybody else. We got the lead in at 3.47 p.m. Dan's gonna tell us what happened next. We dropped everything we were doing at 3.45 p.m. We saw the opportunity. We knew we had to seize the moment, so we all drove over here. The contractor, myself, Hugh, we all analyzed it. We realized we need to take this down. So We had no idea what the yeah. inside looked like at all, but we said we're making an offer contingent on inspection. Mm -hmm. And then Dan spent the rest of the night doing what? Calling. I just kept on trying to get in touch with the agent. Um, he was, he's a busy guy, but eventually I was able to get a hold of him. At that point, we learned that there was a lot of interest in this property and the game plan was for everyone to show up at 10 a.m. tomorrow. I just kept pushing and we managed to get inside um, at 9 a.m. the next morning and was so able to walk through it. We kept calling. He was in touch with the listing agent, mm -hmm. but the sellers were non-responsive and we kept pushing until 11 p.m. The next morning at 06, we started again, just being on the horn, calling the listing agent. We finally got a hold of them. Dan's already said that the plan was everyone's gonna be here, highest and best offer, 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Dan talked us into being to able to come in at 09. Yeah. We met, we walked through the building, and we got it under contract at 9.45 in the morning, 15 minutes before there was before everyone else. Just like the silo, our systems allowed us to find, execute, and act on those properties and deals that popped up. We came up against people that were way wealthier than us, that had way more manpower, but we were able to steal this deal. We had more hustle, better attack, more than anything, we took action sooner and more aggressively than anyone else did. That's why we got this.